Number 39. Find the useful power output of an elevator motor that lifts a 2,500 kilogram load a height of 35 meters in 12 seconds if it also increases the speed from rest to 4 meters per second. And note that the total mass of the counterbalance system is 10,000 kilograms so that only 2,500 kilograms is raised in height, but the full 10,000 kilograms is accelerated. All right. So basically what that last part I believe is trying to mention is that um, we have here is a 25 kilogram, excuse me, well that, that'd be a very light elevator, right? 25 kilograms. Um, here we have a 2,500 kilogram elevator and it is being raised in height. So it's experiencing some acceleration upward and the counterbalance uh, to this elevator is going to be 7,500 a kilogram mass because it told us that the total mass of the counterbalance system was 10,000 kilograms. All right. So if this elevator goes up, then this counterbalanced weight has to go down. All right. So we got to keep that in mind as we're doing our calculations. But um, this picture on the left is how I'm interpreting the information given. All right. So now let's focus on what we have to find. It says find the useful power output. All right. So we got to try to figure out which equation on the right hand side we want to deal with or start working with. And I believe the best equation here to use will be this one on the right. All right. It will be the power is equal to the change in energy per time. Now, why am I choosing this equation? Well, they tell me that it's being this elevator is being raised by some height and it also is telling me a speed, right? That it, that it attains. And therefore, as I'm thinking about how height and speed relate to power, and energy, I know it relates via kinetic and potential energy. All right, so therefore, I believe this would probably be the best formula to use. It would make the most sense because it deals with the change in energy value in the numerator. All right, and then the time, right? I mean, they told us that it does all this stuff in 12 seconds. So obviously, we already know the time. That's easy. We do know uh, the time it takes uh, for the elevator motor to change its energy. All right, so really what I'm focusing in on is what is the numerator value here because if I can find that remember I can find the power so now what's going on in this system well we got a couple of things right there's this elevator that is moving upwards right it's going to obtain a certain height and it also going to obtain a certain speed as well as this unit right it is also uh, moving as well right it will move with the same speed as the elevator um, and it will also move uh, at the same height, but just in the opposite direction, right? I should say it will move the same distance, all right? Just in the opposite direction. So let's try to expand this change in energy to detail all the energies of the problem, right? So let's say the power is gonna be equal to now the change in energy. Well, remember I mentioned before that I have both kinetic and potential, all right? So uh, this will be, let me label this E for elevator, all right? And let me label this um, C for counterbalanced weight. Okay. So the power should equal the change in energy. So the change in kinetic energy, all right, of the elevator plus the change in potential energy of the elevator plus, right, the change in kinetic energy of the counterbalanced weight plus also the change in potential energy of that counterbalanced weight. All right. That will all now be divided by the time. Okay. Now let's try to expand each of these, all right? So the power now will equal change in kinetic energy of the elevator. Remember that the change in kinetic energy can be rewritten as a one half m, oops, one half m times vf squared, right? Minus vi squared, okay? Plus then change in potential energy can be rewritten as mg hf minus hi right remember that these are all for uh the elevator so far so what maybe i'll do here is i'll put this half in a different color just because it's going to get a little crazy with all the subscripts so that's going to be plus um, one half times the mass of the counterbalance weight multiplied by its final velocity squared minus its initial velocity squared uh, plus then it's m mass times g right times the final height of it minus its initial. Okay, and that's all over time. Okay, so we got a nice, let me make that line a little straighter. We got a nice long equation here, all right? 
So I can simplify this a little bit, right? I mean, these two terms have the same mass, so I can pull that out, all right? So I'm going to write m for the mass of the elevator, all right? And let me actually now put in the number because I'm going to, I already noticed I'm going to be running out of space. So let me take the 2,500, right? Times now one half, all right? Multiplied by then. Now, if we look at this part, the initial velocity of the elevator was zero, right? So this whole thing just go is zero. So it's just multiplied then by the final velocity squared. And it said it obtains a velocity of four meters per second. So this is going to be one half times four squared plus gravity, 9.80, because I took out the mass, times then the difference in height. Now I'm assuming, you know, let's just say they start, it starts at about this height, whatever the case is, that's zero, it doesn't matter. It's going to rise up uh, 35 meters. Okay, so that's going to be a positive. Um, so the initial height we'll say was zero, and the final height was 35, so therefore when we plug that in, it's a positive 35. Okay? All right, great. Let's just close that up with a bracket. Now, we have plus then uh, the mass now of the counterbalance. So I'll take that mass out and we're going to do the same thing, right? It's basically going to be, again, the mass of that was 7,500 kilograms. Multiply them by one half. Now the final velocity is moving, it's moving in the opposite direction, but it really doesn't matter. You know, if you plug in the negative sign, that's wonderful, but uh, re remember it's squared. So if you don't, if you plug in the negative, great. If not, it doesn't matter, right? Because Negative times a negative is a positive, and positive times a positive is a positive. So that's all that matters. And the initial, though, of that counterbalance was also zero, so that cancels. Okay? So this is just, again, one-half times four squared. And that's going to then be plus. I took out the mass here, right, times gravity, 9.8. Then multiplied by the final height minus the initial. So this is just the opposite, though, right? If I'm starting my zero point here, let's just say, um, and, uh, you know, what... I would then call the height that the elevate the counterbalance is starting at at zero. Okay, that's the that's the um, initial. Then as it moves down though, right, it's moving in the negative y direction. So therefore, its final height would then be a negative uh, thirty five instead of a positive. Okay, so you could just think of that that about that as like a plane, right? If this one's going up, it's going up in the positive, and then this one's going down, going down in the negative direction. So therefore, this should now be a uh, negative uh, 35, okay? And now that's all going to be then divided by the time. And the time they gave it to us, all this is happening in 12 seconds, 12 seconds. So now, all I need to do is just calculate it, right? So let me uh, do, I'm going to just put the answer on the upper, uh, actually, I'll put the answer over here, bottom left, all right? So just be careful with all the signs. So here we get a value now, it's going to be negative, and here we get a value of negative 1.36, I'm going to do three sig figs, 1.36 times 10 raised to the fifth, all right, and that's in terms of watts. So now you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, why, whoops, now you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, why is that negative? Well, you have to remember uh, what we just calculated, okay? We basically calculated the power that's inherent within this system, okay? Now, what's happening is that power is actually being taken out of this system, all right? That's what the negative sign implies. So power is being taken out. Well, how does that make any sense? Well, if you were to uh, not, let's say, not use any of the numbers above, and we're not using right, the 12 seconds or anything like that, if you were to find the acceleration of this system, just if it were able to move naturally, there was no motor or anything like that, all right? We know this side would accelerate up, this side would accelerate down. What would be the rate? It would be actually about five meters per second squared, uh, somewhere around there, all right? Uh, but that's not even close to what the system is accelerating at right now, right? I mean, they told us that it goes from rest to four meters per second, and it says that it it does this over a time of 12 seconds. Now, here's the thing, right? I don't necessarily know that it obtains this final velocity in 12 seconds, like meaning at the 12 second mark, it finally reached four meters per second, or it reached four meters per second sometime within the 12 seconds. But all I know is that if it did obtain this, you know, acceleration 
at the end of the time, that only works out to like 0.33, right? It, it's like one third um, meter per second squared. Uh, so it's significantly less. You know, even if I have that, I'm still far off from about five meters per second. So basically this system as of right now is not able to just freely accelerate on its own, how it, how it naturally would. Obviously the system would accelerate, you know, this would go up and this would go down. Um, so it's not able to accelerate at the rate it naturally would. So something's slowing it down, right? Something's pulling out power from this system. That's what the negative sign is saying. And guess what's pulling out the power? The motor, okay? The motor is pulling out the power. The motor is kind of acting like, acting like friction, right? The motor is acting like friction. So that being the case, well, this is a whole long-winded discussion for what the final value should be. Now, the final value here for the motor should not be a negative value. It should be in the positive form. But the negative sign is okay that we calculate. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It just, it tells you something specific that about the power in this system. Somehow in that system, power is being taken out. What's taking it out? The motor's taking it out. All right, so therefore the power of the motor is going to be a positive 1.36 times 10 to the fifth watts. Okay? So that takes care of that. Now, moving on, letter B. Uh, what does it cost if the electricity is nine cents per kilowatt hour? So it just says, what does it cost? It doesn't say, what does it cost per ride, per round trip, per hour, per day, per year, per whatever. It just says, what does it cost? So I have to make an assumption here, you know, about what I'm going to calculate. Um, why don't we just calculate per ride, okay? One way, one, one way trip, all right? So let's just calculate uh, how much it costs just to bring this elevator up and uh, what, from basically what we just calculated, okay? The power necessary. So if we do that now, um, remember my whole, the whole goal is I'm going to rewrite this uh, power function, cost function, I should say, uh, in terms of a fraction. So this is really 0 0.0900 dollars per kilowatt hour. All right, and what I want to know is I want to know just how much it costs. So I somehow have to cancel kilowatt, and I somehow have to cancel hour. So basically, I need two units, okay? One that deals with watts, and one that deals with, or power, that is, and one that deals with time, okay? So here is the power. We already calculated this, right? Here is the power uh, produced by the motor. So I know this in watts, right? I just would need to convert it into kilowatts to cancel that unit, so I'm not going to do the whole long-winded calculation because it, it's not really that long-winded, but I don't have much room. So remember, I'm basically going to divide out 1,000 from this value or just subtract the exponent here by 3. So in other words, this will become, um, let me just write it here. This will become 1 point, so it's basically the same thing that the power here is 1.36 36 times 10 to the second kilowatt. Okay, so that's good. So this is going to be my unit for power now in when I do my dimensional analysis. And then uh, next would be I need to find a time, uh, right? Because this is in hours. And how long is the elevator ride occurring, this one-way trip? Well, it's taking 12 seconds, right? So somehow now I got to convert my 12 seconds into hours, all right? So that maybe I'll do the calculation because it's a little longer. I'll do it over here on the upper right. So let me just change the color. So this is going to be uh, 12 seconds, and I want to convert that into hours, so seconds on the bottom, hour on the top, 3,600 seconds in one hour. So there we go. Let's just plug it into the calculator. So it's going to be 12 divided by 3,600. We get an answer of about 3.33, 3.33, and I'm running out of room. And that looks like times 10 to the minus 3, though. So let me just write it right below it. So this is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 3 hours. So now I have enough I need to know to calculate. So basically, remember, I want to know I want to know how much does it cost, All right? So I need I need to set up my conversions now so that when it when I multiply everything, I just get dollars in the numerator. Okay, so I already have this set up nicely because I already have my dollar in the numerator. Okay, so that's half the battle. So now I just got to plug in these values accordingly. All right, so let me work with this one first. Okay. So basically now what I want to do is I want to cancel the kilowatt. Therefore, this kilowatt will go in the numerator. So we have 1.36 1.36 times 10 raised to the second kilowatt. You can put that over 1 if you like. 
and the kilowatts cancel. And then now I want to cancel the hours. Now I'm going to put my hour value in the numerator so that they cancel, right? So this is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 3 hours. And you can put that over 1 if you like, and that cancels. So now when I do the math here, guess what we're going to get? Dollars. So 0 0.9 times 1.36 times 10 to the second times 3.33 times 10 uh, to the minus 3. And it would cost now, in dollars, it would cost 0 0.04. I'll just round a little bit, one, right? So essentially it costs about four cents per ride, okay? And then depending upon how many rides there are, right, you can then obviously find how much it would cost per hour if you knew the average number of rides per hour, per day, per whatever. Um, but this would probably be the best way to calculate it, you know, per ride. Because if you calculated it per hour or per minute, um, anything like that, uh, that assumes that it's actively working during that amount of time um, constantly, which it probably isn't reasonable. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. I hope this video helped. And please do remember to subscribe. That would be great. And um, if you know anybody else that might be helped by these videos, please feel free to spread the word. All right. That would be much appreciated. And uh, yeah, I look forward to helping you out with the next question. Take care now.